Well, here we are back in the same place, and it's the, it's, a, it's a few months till till uh, till the blues festival, and and uh, this is a familiar place for us. <laughs> it is familiar. In fact, I haven't really even cleaned my desk off from last year's festival. Yet. Really? So yeah, wow. I mean, it never ends, and my desk is just like it's a work in progress. I'd say. Speaking of progress, you got all the headliners booked. Pretty much, yeah. There, there's like one spot we're still working on, but yeah. Um, yeah, I think, you know, overall, it's, in terms of the kind of the range and mix of acts we've got this year, I think it's one of, if not the strongest lineups we're going to have. Really? In a long time. Wow. Yeah, I do. For instance? For instance, <laughs> well, with it, we're kicking it off with uh, Greg Allman, Greg Allman Band. Uh -huh. Really wanted to make it right after last year. Yeah. He had health, some health issues that can't, made him cancel, so he gave us a really great deal. Coming back, uh -huh. um, J Mo, who was the original drummer of the Almond Brothers, yeah. he's got his own funk project. Huh. He's playing. Uh -huh. Devin Almond is also coming. Devin yeah. is Greg's guitar playing son. Uh -huh. um, so there's going to be this whole little kind of Almond Brothers extended family thing uh -huh. on opening night that should be really fun. Uh -huh. And uh, on the front porch stage, we're going to have um, some Zydeco acts and. Lots of activity. Let uh -huh. me know if you need a sweetener right Okay, thanks. Um, <laughs> it's real. Yeah, it's real. <laughs> Let's see, Friday we're going to um, sort of have a 10th anniversary of Katrina uh -huh. party. Yeah. The Oregon Food Bank was very involved in the uh, relief efforts after Hurricane Katrina. I was there. Yeah, you were there. We put together a special fundraising effort. Yeah. Concert. I read that piece days. of mine from the stage while Reggie was. That's right. That's played, right. That's played right. In the you background. were on stage. Oh, yeah. That was great. It made everybody was, cry. That was me great. too. Yeah. <laughs> so um, Friday is all going to be a lot of it is going to be about that. We've got Alan uh -huh. Toussaint can't, coming for the first time. Wow. I've never had Alan Toussaint before. He's you know he's a legend. He is. Um, Charmaine Neville's coming with Reggie. Uh -huh. uh, Galactica's coming with um, Macy Gray in tow as their front uh -huh. singer, lead uh -huh. singer. That should be kind of intriguing. Jeez. We've got um, several different Zydeco acts, uh, Rosie Ledad and Chubby Carrier. Uh -huh. um, Little Buck Senegal is going to do a blues set. Wow. Um, so that should Has be fun. Has he played the though. festival before? He played with Buckwheat Zydeco. Yeah, a long time ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, uh, and he's a legendary sideman. He is. You know, he's yeah. been on just scores of records. That's a great get. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people don't know Little Buck Senegal, but the people who do know Little yeah, Buck yeah, Senegal, yeah. then that's... He's an inside story for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no longer. No longer. We'll take care of that. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, Saturday the 4th, we've got... Um, the Paladins coming back for the first time in like 10 or 12 years, I think. They sort of disbanded for a long time, they were uh -huh. coming back. They were always like one of my favorite acts of the festival. Yeah. They just did amazing things. Uh, Dave and Phil Alvin are coming. They've never been here before. That'll be interesting. Uh -huh. um, let's see, the 4th of July, we've got, well, the harmonica blow-off is happening on the 4th of July. Of course. Um, Who's singing the national anthem? Do we know yet? Andy Stokes. Oh, what a great choice. Yeah. Is Andy going to be playing? Andy's going to be playing. I'm not quite sure whether we're going to do the Marvin Gaye thing yeah. or whether we're going to do the Oxford Soul All Stars. Um, more loose kind of a. We are going to, we're running a, 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 a nice big profile on Andy uh, in the next week or two. Oh, that's great. I mean, yeah. he's, to me, he, there, there's nobody. Nobody. A, nobody anywhere. Not even close. Anywhere yeah. near him. Yeah. I mean, he's just, he is such an unsung hero. Yep. I mean, yep. why he isn't like a superstar, I, you know. Yeah, maybe this will be his year, huh? Yeah. I mean, I love him. He's, he's a great guy. He is. He's just a great yeah. guy and an amazing talent. Yep. Amazing talent. Yep. He sang for us at one of our birthday shows. I would have loved to have seen, have seen him play college football. That's what I really yes. <laughs> I would have loved to have seen him in the backfield. Man. You know, when, when, you're, when you're, there are memories, male vocalist, uh, go-to guy, yeah. that says a lot. Yeah, yeah he's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, Sunday, we've got um, Buddy Guys heading, headline. Yeah. It'll be fun. We've got um, a, uh, well, we've got one piece of the puzzle that's still to be determined on the, on the Sunday. It's sort of the afternoon headline slot. We haven't quite really figured out yet. Okay. We've got some young, um, some kind of interesting younger acts in the mix this year. We've got this horn band called Turquoise. Uh huh. Uh, really fun. Pretty, you know, to me, it's like what we grew up playing. You know, it's uh -huh. like a horn band playing kind of James Brown stuff. Yeah. Uh, there's another act, um, Conbrio from San Francisco. Uh -huh. They have this young singer who is about, I think, 22 or 23 years old, Afro-American kid. Um, he sings like and moves like Michael Jackson. Wow. He's really good. Or maybe like a young James Brown. Yeah, we ran a video of the day of those guys. Oh, you did? Okay, yeah, yeah. 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 So you know who they are. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they'll be fun. Um, another band called Jelly Bread from Ray uh -huh. It's kind of a young funk band. Uh, what else is happening? Who do you get to play with this year? Well, probably the two loose Cajun bands. Yeah. Um, and then maybe, depending on what Andy ends up doing, I might uh -huh. be playing with, it, with his set. Uh -huh. so last year I played with him and Lisa Mann on uh -huh. sort of a soul show. It was really fun. Yeah. <clears throat> so hopefully hopefully I get to do that, but I'm not going to make be the final decision maker on that. You know? <laughs> I have a vested interest. <laughs> you so. just be the final decision maker on everything else. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, what what uh, uh, are there any changes in ticket in ticketing or any well, of that yeah, stuff this year? Well, yeah, we're not going to do the expensive Sunday ticket this year. Uh huh. We sort of created that in order to make Robert Plant work that year that he came through. That year we had already booked the whole festival. Yeah. Heard that Robert Plant was coming through. Had to come up with a lot of money to make that work. Yeah. We still got an incredible deal on him. Yeah. Um, and so we created this hybrid event around yeah. Robert Plant. It really worked that year. It didn't work so well last year uh -huh. for maybe because of the lineup, maybe because Greg Allman couldn't be there. Yeah. Um, the attendance was a little bit light on Sunday. And we just kind of decided that rather than cling to a model that was predicated on this notion that we were going to find some huge act to make it all work on Sunday, uh -huh. the reality is there aren't really any other acts in the world like Robert Plant. I mean, you know, until sure. you're talking about Stevie Wonder or Carlos Santana, yeah. those guys cost like three quarters of a million dollars. That's more a lot. than our entire budget for the festival. <laughs> so we couldn't do that. Yeah. It happened because Robert Plant wanted to play our event. Uh -huh. um, you know, as just an icon, he was way underpriced and went undervalued, and he gave yeah. us a deal on that. So it, ha it worked that year. Yeah. So this year we are on the cusp of making a decision about whether to go back to a strict donation uh -huh. or a flat ten dollar a day fee. Yeah. That's what we're trying to make happen. It's April. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're, but we need a city permit to do that. Uh huh. That's why we're we haven't made the call yet. We've gotcha. got to we've got to be able to close some traffic lanes mm -hmm. on NATO. Yeah. And um, we want to do it not so much for income reasons, but so that we can sort of control the crowds when they get max. Yeah. Uh, if we're, we're actually charging people at the gate, it sort of gives us an ability to control traffic flows and a lot of things that um, we, we're out of, are out of our control if it's a, strictly a donation entry. Well, it sounds like a great festival. It really does. That's a very exciting festival this year. I think so. I think yeah. it's really, uh, yeah. Yeah. you know, it's got a lot of different moving parts. It's really? It should be fun. Really. Well, we'll be there in the Oregon Music News comfy booth as usual. I'll, I'll, I'll drop by. Great. Thanks if a lot. If I can sit down for a few minutes. Yes. You, know. <laughs> you never look like you're tired. You never look like you're tired. You never look like you're stressed. Yeah. No, it doesn't happen until like a two weeks after the festival, my kids had a Facebook photo album going of me falling asleep in public places. <laughs> I mean, it was like, like that, I passed out in a restaurant or on the steps somewhere. So 
fan base. Very embarrassing. Okay, well, thanks okay. a lot.